Okay, fantastic. So let's continue with another great talk. So we're going to the little bit more technical domain. So our next speaker um, is, has 20 plus years of experience in Silicon Valley. So he's been a tech leader across many of the world's leading companies. Currently he's the VP of engineering at eBay, where he's in charge of their new, new uh, AI powered products. And he is going to talk about how to solve for AI. So please welcome our next speaker, Jabshir Tuzi. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. And you're the first one getting our intro video. So All you right. Have your own personalized intro. <clears throat> All right. It's going to be a hard time. Fault going to be a very hard time following uh, the two of them. If anybody's seen the movie The Odd Couple, I think they kind of epitomized uh, them for the, for the moment. So thank you for actually uh, warming up the crowd, I guess. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about AI. And uh, before the mayor of Cluj walks away, one of the interesting things that he did was kind of set up the topic quite well in terms of what we're what we're planning to do in AI and where the world is going with AI. On my side, I'm going to talk a little bit about how eBay, as a large enterprise company, has been working on it over the course of the last two decades, but specifically in the last two to three years, how we've actually really heavily pushed on this fourth generation um, of AI, the fourth wave of AI. I'm going to start by actually showing you um, a set of products that I've actually launched talk a little bit about our vision, and then actually end with a little bit of where we think we're going to go into the future. So that's kind of the agenda for the day. What you're going to see uh, in this next video is something that we developed completely in-house. So all of the bits and pieces, uh, whether it was related to natural language understanding, semantic search, whether it had to do with uh, computer vision, was all built in-house, specially trained with uh, retail or commerce related data. So if we can go to the next video. Can we hit play, please? Do we have audio? Ask eBay to find me a Kate Spade bag. OK, getting eBay. Got it. Looking for a color that's black, brown, or something else? Black. Got it. Looking for a material that's leather, canvas, or something else? Leather. Great. Do you want a style that's shoulder bag, satchel, or something else? Shoulder bag. I looked through 36 options on eBay and the best deal on bags is $281.78. I have more info on this deal for you. Is it okay if I send that to your phone? Yes. Okay, go ahead and check. And I'll talk to you there. So what you saw there was um, a multimodal interaction that involved dialogue that actually happened across a series of stages. The thing that we found as we started to launch this uh, in the hands of users was that people wanted to interact as they do in real life. They actually talk to you, they text you something, they show you an image of something that they like. So modality, the ability to be able to switch modality was superbly important. So one of the things that we built into eBay ShopBot, which was the idea that not only can you start in the modality of choice, you can switch it during the turn or a conversation, but you can also have the bot recommend changes in terms of how that works. One of the fun parts um, that we found as we were uh, running through the beta of this about a year ago was that people actually would send us a lot of emojis. Um, so for those of you who know what Halloween is, during Halloween time, we would get a lot of pumpkin emojis that would show up. And they actually wanted a reaction from the bot. They actually wanted products that would match that particular emoji. So we had to actually learn various types of emojis and respond with either in kind or in product depending on how that works. At this point in stage, the, 
we're staring at an inflection point. Um, the, the world, in terms of AI, is going to change as it relates to categories, verticals, industries, across the board. This change hasn't really been happening, um, I think the mayor was mentioning, since the time of maybe fire and electricity. Um, and I personally fundamentally believe that AI is actually going to help change in a positive way, as long as we technologists make sure that that's the case, make that happen. It's going to be an interesting, um, interesting change that, uh, that we're all going to kind of face in the next decade. From an eBay perspective, our vision on what we're expecting to do is to create a self-managed, learning AI marketplace. <clears throat> so I'm going to break that down in a second. But the idea behind this one is really that, that 22 years ago or so, eBay created the first open, two-sided marketplace. Today, we're doing the work to really think about what would it take to build something that is now AI managed. The way we look at this is in three parts. I'm going to break this down from the bottom. With this concept we call deep commerce, which is this idea that if you combine these three assets together, you would get something that is really powerful at the end on the other side. So from the bottom, you'll see something to the effect of we have this concept called shop knowledge. Shop knowledge is this idea that not only understanding an item in its entirety, the facets, the colors, the, uh, the other bits and pieces that make an item something, but attaching world knowledge. What's the usage of this item? If you're going to go buy an umbrella, if you're going to go buy a pair of binoculars, what are you going to use it for really becomes the reason why you would actually go and buy something. It doesn't work otherwise. You currently, keyword search, basically, you have to do a lot of the thinking Tomorrow, we want to make sure that you don't have to do a lot of that work. We either know and understand you, or we know and understand the reason that you're actually going to do this. So it's a concept we call unlocking intent. On the user side, it's basically understanding user history, really knowing what you have done, and obviously privacy enabled. But we want to make sure that during the course of what you have told us or you shared with us, can we understand that? Can we understand things like your brand propensity? Can we understand things like what is your price uh, per item that you're willing to pay? If we can understand that, we can certainly give you a much better answer to your question or your query. Well, the top one um, is a little bit more controversial. So if the true meaning for AI in general is to build a universal algorithm, I have this concept or notion that you want to build out a universal commerce algorithm. This is an algorithm that actually understands things across the board. Uh, it understands how does search happen, how does personalization, how does a user work, what's the item and the usage. It actually incorporates all of the data and understands when you need something to basically respond and get you an answer back. So this is something that's longer term, for sure, but we're working towards that and making, making sure that we can actually truly build a universal commerce AI algorithm. Combine these all together, we actually make it into something we call deep commerce. So if you take anything away today from the slide, this would be the one I would uh, recommend uh, taking away. I wanted to also mention how the journey so far has been. We kicked this new division off uh, called New Product Development, which is this idea that we want to build out something from scratch starting only about a couple of years ago. And just in this series of two years, uh, you can see you can do a lot. Um, what we decided we were going to go work on, si starting from get-go, was invest in some base-level capabilities. And that's really when we kicked off uh, this particular base. We built a lot of underlying infrastructure in a modern technology stack. Uh, we built our first layer of base AI capabilities around vision, around natural language. Uh, using a lot of the modern-day um, deep neural networks. From there on, we've done a series of iterations. The team does an amazing job. They've done so many iterations over the course of the last year and a half since we launched the first thing into beta, um, where we've actually been able to both learn from our users, but also actually build something new that hasn't been seen before. I do believe this is, our, this is the only multimodal shopping assistant that exists in the market today. 
And we launched some really interesting features as part of that as well. This idea that um, guidance is something that we wanted to build out, which was this, this concept that allows you to separate out your set of searches. And so it's just seeing a whole list of blue search results. We actually guide the users into things like what is trending today, what's popular, what's potentially the best value for you, what's the top selling item. So now you can actually go in and look at data in a slightly different way and get a much better understanding. Or if you have a usage paradigm of what you want to use it for, we can actually build that as part of it. And we not only take that guidance in a more textual manner or um, in speech, but we also do it in, in vision. So if, for example, you take a picture of a dress and send that to us, we will take that picture and return things either in the same color or in the same cut. And by the way, you can all try this out today on either Facebook Messenger or Google Assistant. Um, it's launched and live. About a year ago, we said, um, what could be harder than launching a personal shopping assistant? So we decided we were going to go take on China. And we relaunched eBay in China, um, which was a massive undertaking uh, for, for us. But happy to note that uh, we did that about three months ago, and it's been going great. Uh, a lot of the work that we did in that, the machine translation uh, in real time happens based on our data and our uh, techniques as well, which launched just about three months ago. <clears throat> Some of the future things we're thinking about, we're actually starting to embed multiple semantic embeddings, which has the idea that you can actually take not only textual data, but cross-lingual textual data, as well as image data into the same embedding set to actually provide, again, a much better result to the end user. In, in the last two decades, there was the first wave of the web. It really brought, it, brought to forth the internet as well as the web. Uh, we started in that generation, in that era. In the 2008 uh, time frame, mobile really came into being with the launch of the iPhone. And I don't know if you all remember, at that time everyone said, there is nobody going to do commerce on that small screen. We all know what changed during that course of time. Uh, but I would have you know that it really didn't tip till the 2012-2014 era, when mobile really became the, the dominant way that people started to do commerce uh, on the internet. In 2015, with the rise of modern-day GPUs, with the rise of specialized TensorFlow processing units, we've actually been able to get to a place where we have been able to really accelerate the pace of AI, something that we weren't even really thinking about when we conceived of it in the 1950s. It has been around a long time. It just hasn't really reached a tipping point, or a, um, both mathematically as well as from a uh, uh, processing power perspective to really get to this place today. But we are there today. And now it's just a matter of both embracing it and guiding it into all the right, right places. As promised, I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a sneak peek on what we're thinking about next. Camera as a platform, as our, our two uh, guests here ably mentioned, have become a very interesting way of doing social. We're thinking about ways that we can actually do social as well with commerce-enabled cameras. So I'm going to roll this. So in that quick snippet, what you saw was you can just use your phone, wave it over all the items that you either want to sell or you want to buy, and very quickly, it can actually build a list for you um, and allow you to do that. And we have this in prototype stage today, and it's, you know, it uh, does really well with customers because the minute you show it to them, they're like, wow, that's actually very useful, and we can do that. That's where I think the camera is going um, into the future. So I'm going to leave you with that. 
as well as uh, maybe one final analogy. So I'm a pilot. I, uh, I, I love flying. And uh, one of the adages that uh, pilots do is uh, this concept that in this world today, you can either be a pilot or a passenger. And I encourage and uh, recommend all of you to chart a course that will get you flying. So thank you. <laughs>